Hi everybody, Miss Mary back again for another virtual story time from Midpoint Libraries. Are you ready? Well, let's find out. If you're ready for a story, act like you're swimming. If you're ready for a story, go for a swim. If you're ready for a story and you want us all to know, if you're ready for a story, act like you're swimming. That was kind of silly. Isn't it fun when I make up the songs on the spot? <laughs> okay, so today we're going to learn about an animal that lives in the ocean and looks like this. Any idea what that could be? Let's see. This animal has one, two, three, four, five points on it. What shape has five points on it? Is there a shape behind me that has five points? I don't see. <gasps> Okay, this one has six, but does that look like an ocean animal to you? Could that be a starfish? That's right. Today we're going to learn about starfish. Okay, and the first thing I'm going to say is we always call this animal a starfish. It's not a fish. It's really not. We call them starfish, but the more correct name is sea star because it's shaped like a star and it lives in the sea, right? Sea is another word for ocean. Okay, so our first story for us today is called Shine. And this one was written for us <clears throat> by Patrick McDonnell and illustrated by Naoko Stoop. And this one comes, from us, comes to us from Little Brown and Company Publishers. Shine. <clears throat> Little Hoshi was a star, a sea star, who lived in the ocean. Every night, she would gaze at the twinkling stars in the sky above and make a wish. I wish I were there instead of here, up there where all is fine, up there where I would shine. Oh. Poor little me, a star stuck in the sea. As the sun rose and the stars disappeared, the tide swept little Hoshi back into the water. I should be floating among the colorful planets, Hoshi thought as she floated among the colorful coral. Imagine all the unique and wonderful friends you could meet up there, she told her unique and wonderful neighbors. Up there, there are exciting and endless possibilities, she explained to the exciting, endless schools of minnows. Where could you see something so magnificent down here? She wondered aloud to the magnificent blue whale. I want to shine, cried little Hoshi. I wish I were there instead of here. Down here, nothing is fine. Down here, I'll never shine. Oh, poor little me, a star stuck in the sea. Everyone tried to cheer her up, but she turned and swam far, far away, down, down, down into the deepest waters where she floated to the murky bottom. Murky. Do you know that word? Murky means kind of dark, kind of foggy, kind of dirty. If you think about a mud puddle, a mud puddle is murky. So she floated down to the murky bottom. Little Hoshi gazed out into the darkness until she saw a star. 
She closed her eyes and made her wish. The star came closer and closer and closer. But it wasn't a star at all. It was an angler fish with her glowing light. Now this is a real kind of fish. This is, okay. There is a kind of fish that lives way down at the bottom of the ocean where no sunlight can get to. And it looks kind of like most fish we see. But it has this up on top, kind of like an antenna, like uh, an insect might have, that sort of thing that grows out of their head. And on an angler fish, at the end is a light. Now it's not a light bulb, but it, um, it kind of glows, sort of like a lightning bug, right? <clears throat> so that's an angler fish. So it wasn't a star at all. It was an angler fish with her glowing light. Why are you down here and not up there? The angler fish asked the little sea star. That's what I want to know, replied Hoshi. Oh, could you, would you, tell me how to shine? It's my pleasure, said the angler fish. I shine because I'm happy. I'm happy to be here, I'm happy to be there, I'm happy to be anywhere. Because happiness, my dear, is always found right here and the anglerfish pointed to her heart and shined. And all her deep sea friends joined in. Woo-wee, said little Hoshi. Thank you. And she swam up, 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 where everyone welcomed her home. She gazed at her colorful, magnificent world and her unique and wonderful friends. And for the first time, she saw so many exciting and endless possibilities. Then little Hoshi looked into her happy heart and shined. Isn't that great? I like that one, that is shine by Patrick McDonald and Naoko Stoop. You know, because it's true. Sometimes when things aren't going the way you want them to, it's easy to think, I have the worst life. Nothing ever goes right. But sometimes you have to look inside yourself and say, all right, today may not be perfect, but tomorrow will be better. And you can look at, I love this, in the book it says, she saw so many exciting and endless possibilities. Mm -hmm. Everything may not be perfect today, but there's always the possibility that it will get better. And in fact, I love that it says endless possibilities because of course that's what we're talking about all summer long is our oceans of possibilities. So I want to remind you about our program guide that tells you about all the cool things that are going on at the library and remind you about your Odyssey adventure log where you can keep track of all the things that you're doing this summer, reading books and going places and learning new things in this endless summer of possibilities. All right, that's enough serious stuff. How about a song? Do you all know the song um, Wheels on the Bus, right? Wheels on the Bus, go round and round. Stop, 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 because we're not singing that. We're gonna take that same song, the music of it, but we're gonna change the words. And we're gonna sing about the fish in the sea. So I'll get us started, and then maybe y'all can suggest some other things. So, you ready? The fish in the sea go swish, 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 swish. The fish in the sea go swish, 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 all day long. What else lives in the ocean? How about dolphins? The dolphins in the sea swim round and round, round and round, round and round. The dolphins in the sea swim round and round all day long. Hmm, let's see. What else is in the ocean? Oh, you know, when I go to visit the ocean, I like to sit on the beach 
and squish my toes in the sand. And in the water, the sand always goes down to the bottom, okay? The sand in the sea goes down, 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 down. The sand in the sea goes down, 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 all day long. And you know what? You can keep singing that song, thinking of all different kinds of animals that live in the ocean, or maybe, oh, the waves. Yeah. You know what? This would make a really good sock, uh, scarf song. So I'm going to just, how about I find a sock and I'll pretend like that's my scarf. Remember, because when we're at home, we don't always have scarves. So we could be like the waves in the sea. The waves in the sea go up and down, up and down, up and down. The waves in the sea go up and down all day long. Eh, what the heck, we like to switch up the songs in the middle, right? It's kind of silly, but that's what I do. And I'm going to be Mr. Rogers and put my sock back on. So I have another song for us, or another book for us. Remember we started talking about starfish, and then we said, no, wait, it's not a fish. It's called a sea star. This book is called Prickly Sea Stars. It's a nonfiction book, so we're going to learn something. And this one was written for us by Natalie Lunis, and it comes from Bearport Publishing. Now, this one has a whole lot of extra information in it. This first section is called Stars of the Sea. Sea stars are animals that live in the sea. Some people call them starfish, but they're not fish. All fish have backbones, right? Like you have bones in your arm and your leg, and you have a long one that goes down your back called your backbone. Fish have those, but starfish do not have backbones. In fact, starfish don't even have heads. Can you imagine not having a head? Well, probably not. So there are about 1,800 different kinds of sea stars. Some sea, sea stars are as small as one inch across. Hold up your thumb. Some sea stars are that small. And some are as big as two feet. That's bigger than this whole book. Mm-hmm, that's pretty big. And they can be a lot of different colors. They all have arms, but they're called rays, right? And they're all connected to the center of the body. Usually we think about them having five, but sometimes they can have more. Oh, so you know what? This could be a sea star with its six. Yeah, they don't have to have five. So sea stars don't have a head or a brain but they can still sense the world around them. They use tiny body parts called eye spots at the end of each ray, and that's how they sense light and dark. And they also use parts of their body to smell other creatures. Now, some sea stars use their sense of smell to hunt for food, and they can smell clams and snails and mussels and other sea creatures. And a sea star will slowly crawl toward the animal and grab it. Mmm, like how I am with tacos. Grab it. <laughs> so, so sea stars eat clams and mussels in a kind of strange way. So they grab the shell, the sea star will grab the shell of the oyster or mussel with their tube feet and they'll pull it till it opens up just a little bit. Then the sea star, this is really weird, the sea star will push its stomach out through its mouth and squeeze its stomach into the shell and eat the animal inside. Isn't that different than anything we've ever heard before? But a few animals, not very many, but a few animals will hunt sea stars for food. Why do only a few animals do that? Because most sea stars have bodies that are covered with prickly skin and that makes them very hard to eat. Some fish and crabs are able to eat sea stars, though. Seagulls and otters sometimes catch them and eat them, too. A sea star sometimes loses a ray in a struggle with an enemy, right? So if it gets into a fight, sometimes one of its arms will come off, which doesn't sound very pleasant to me. But when this happens, the sea star can grow a new ray. And for a while, it's smaller, but eventually it grows to be the same size as all the rest. 
Sea stars can grow back more than just one ray. They can grow back two or three or four. And in fact, get this, sometimes one chopped off ray can grow into a whole new sea star. Isn't that amazing? For a long time, people have caught clams and oysters for food. And in the past, they would just chop up any sea stars they found in their nets, and they would just throw them back into the sea. People thought that they were getting rid of the sea stars. And in fact, they were causing more sea stars to grow. And then the rest of the book tells us about um, other animals. The last part here is called a glossary. Sometimes in nonfiction books, books of true facts, there will be a glossary at the back. That's like a little tiny dictionary that uh, tells us about some of the words that we learned. Like we learned the word ray means a starfish, uh, sea star's arm. And we learned about, um, uh, da, 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 da. we learned about the word stomach, where for me, and I hope for you, my stomach stays on the inside and I put food in my mouth and it goes to my stomach, but for a sea star, it can make its stomach come out and get the food and that's just not something I want to think about a whole lot. Okay, so um, I was thinking that today for an activity, since we've already looked at our uh, reading log map, our adventure odyssey, odyssey adventure log, um, I was thinking maybe we could look for stars today, anywhere you go. Now we've already seen a couple of stars on the wall here behind me, um, but while you're out and doing things today, why don't you see if you can find stars? I'll give you a hint. If you see a flag, a United States flag that has stars on it. Mm -hmm. So um, that's one place you can look. I want you to see all the different places you can find stars. All right? Okay. So um, next week we're going to talk about, oh, next week we're going to talk about a made up uh, creature that lives in the ocean. Some people think they're real, some people don't. But I will tell you that this uh, creature that lives in the ocean has the top half of that, uh, of the top half is a person and the bottom half is a fish. Do you know what that is? You think about it and we'll talk about it next week. All right. In the meantime, let's sing our goodbye song. See you later, alligator, after a while, crocodile. Give a hug, ladybug, blow a kiss, jellyfish. See you soon, big baboon, out the door, dinosaur. Take care, polar bear, wave goodbye, butterfly. Bye-bye, everybody.